This is King of the Hill Nucleus. It is a King of the Hill map that rotates around having radial symmetry rather than bilateral symmetry, which other King of the Hill maps tend to have. It rotates around a central control point with four narrow catwalks over a bottomless pit extending toward the point. One team must have control of this point for a total of three minutes to win the round. There are three levels to this map, the balconies, the sublevel, and the main perimeter. A circular map brings out all sorts of problems and strategies not often employed. This video's purpose is to teach you the best of all the classes. As a scout, your double jump will give you an advantage over the other classes as the bottomless pit, a prominent hazard when capturing, will be less deadly. Two scatterguns reign supreme in Nucleus. For mobility, the soda popper's hype jump is unbeatable in traversing the map, and the force of nature's knockback is perfectly perfect for launching, launching you around though you should be wary of the pits, and of course knocking enemies off the catwalks to certain doom. This map has very few health kits, so bleeding inflicted by the Boston Basher and Flying Guillotine will be very dangerous. In addition, Mad Milk is excellent for dispersing the crowds of enemies on the point. Be sure to always keep moving and don't let yourself get knocked around. As a soldier, you are one of the more dangerous classes on Nucleus for your ability to launch projectiles in a straight line. This can easily shatter a defense or offense on the control point through well-placed projectiles. The catwalks are so narrow that even the direct hit can break an attack and send attackers plummeting to the pitfalls below. Due to the multiple levels of the map, a rocket jumping soldier can have some merit as well. Using the Liberty Launcher or the Rocket Jumper is a good choice in this case. Be wary of charging straight into a group of enemies, however, and try to maintain some distance. Pyros have a difficult job on Nucleus due to its lack of ambush spots. However, a Pyro still has its merits. It is arguably the best balcony clearing class, as it can come up behind an enemy and completely char the entire small balcony before they can turn. They can act as engineer buddies as well, as the map lacks cover for a sentry gun. A Pyro that uses their air blast on this map poses a great pit buddy. They can easily sacrifice enemies to that gaping radioactive mouth below, perhaps a great Pyro land deity. For this reason, it is best to use the Degreaser and Flamethrower for this map, with the Backburner finding some merit in ambushing enemies on the balcony. Demomen find themselves in the same position as the Soldier, albeit with a good amount of versatility. They can easily defend the control point with their Sticky Bomb Launcher, the Scottish Resistance is unneeded on this map as there's only one point, and also destroy enemies coming down the catwalks while Sticky Jumping to reach balconies and destroying enemies. The Loose Cannon's Cannonballs can easily knock enemies into the void below, However, the grenade launcher is good for casting rollers down the catwalk, and the lock and load can provide a more linear attack style, blowing apart advancing enemies. A heavy finds little tactical purpose on this map except to hold the control point. This is where his nature as a defensive class truly comes into play. A strong heavy, using the Brass Beast or Natasha, can tear apart an advancing force. With few ambush spots, the Tomislav is to be avoided, and Nucleus's involved layout makes it difficult to pause for a sandwich. The Fists of Steel make it easy to stop enemy snipers as well, while the map's small size negates the need for the gloves of running urgently. When playing as Engineer, one will encounter the problem that few spots close to the control point are covered enough to successfully deploy a sentry. The Rescue Ranger can remedy this, pulling a sentry out of harm's way if needed. However, if a player plans to hold a base, the Wrangler, for longer range, is invaluable while the Jag is a handy quick setup wrench. A combat mini sentry gun, unlocked with a gunslinger, is a remarkably effective disruptor, especially if deployed away from your team's advance. A medic will have a tough time healing all of their teammates on this intense map, however the quick fix for its quick healing time can be excellent at this purpose. When on defense, the Vaccinator is a great help, especially against a coordinated soldier demo man rush or heavy medic rush, as are prone to happen on this map. If they choose to act offensively, deploying several shots with the creative creator's crossbow, crusader's crossbow from far off can make a deadly asset to your team. Another note is that one can ubercharge a pyro and start a rush of devastating air blasts and flames around the map. Snipers hide hiding behind the crates near their spawn or on the balconies can be a bane to the other team. The crates make them nearly untouchable unless approached from the side, and it is advisable to equip the Razorback to deal with spies. However, the sniper is still susceptible to acts coming from around the map, particularly those of demoman, heavies, and soldiers. Using the Machina can easily rip apart multiple enemies on the point, but Jurati can do just as well and help your team in the process. 
When a map is circular, spies will find it all too easy to end up on the other team's side, as even without cloaking much. As such, it lies to the team's pyros to burn them and blast them away. A spy should be sure to thin out rushes before they happen with his backstab, destroying far off targets with his ambassador, or stocking up on backstabs, and then going to town with the diamond back. If caught, as you probably will be, the dead ringer is an excellent choice, but it is hard to find hiding places to cloak and decloak. I hope this video makes you better at understanding King of the Hill Nucleus. Thank you for watching. Until next time.